much for attending the fifth annual Young Gifted and Green reception. All right, so tonight in this program, you're here about some phenomenal young people who are continuing to care the torch and environmental justice. Um, before we actually celebrate these young leaders in the EJ movement, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors for tonight. Our green title sponsor is none other than the Climate Action Campaign, who is in the house tonight. If you could give a round of applause to the Climate Action Campaign. We'd also like to thank our gold sponsors, the Environmental Defense Fund, as well as Daddy's Consulting LLC. If we can get a round of applause for our sponsors. We'd also like to thank and acknowledge our community partners because without the intersections of our work, especially as black and brown people, this event wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much. In addition to our sponsors, our community partners include Poder Latinx, Corazon Latino, the Black Women's Health Imperative, Thursday Network with the Greater Washington Urban League, and I also I feel like I am leaving out someone, but I think that's it. If I left you out, I love you dearly. <laughs> oh, and Privileged, thank you, Privileged Memphis was the um, other yeah. organization that I left out. While COVID-19 has changed our lives forever, we have lost some giants in the EJ movement for black liberation. Tonight, we will acknowledge two phenomenal black kings who left us way too soon. So the first individual, we had an opportunity to meet with Black Millennials for Flint in Baltimore, Maryland. If you're not aware, in 2018, we filmed a documentary in Baltimore, Maryland about the lead paint crisis. So while when we first think about lead, we immediately think about Flint, Michigan. However, issues that are pervasive around lead poisoning go way beyond Flint, Michigan, but you'll see that the demographics look very much the same. Michael K. Williams was just floored um, to see the state of affairs as it relates to the lead process in Baltimore. What's interesting about Baltimore and the state of Maryland is that it's pretty progressive as it relates to legislative policy around environmental justice, but the implementation kind of falls short, and then, per usual, black and brown people bear the brunt of that. So we honor Michael K. Williams for his dedication to allow us to borrow his platform to take this organization to further heights so that we can expand our reach as it relates to lead poisoning and environmental justice. Also, we would be remiss not to acknowledge Mr. Cecil D. Corbin Mark, who was an absolute titan in the environmental justice movement. He was a former executive staff member for the famous um, we Act for Environmental Justice in Harlem, New York. Um, so if we could just pause and take just a moment of silence to acknowledge these kings who have transitioned on to become our ancestors. All right, thank you so much for that acknowledgement. So we're going to transition into the program for tonight. You will not be belabored by my teacher voice today. We're gonna to hear from a phenomenal brother who I just adore. And I'm so excited for the first time we finally got none other than Mustafa, excuse me, Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali. Um, he is a renowned thought leader, international speaker, policy maker, um, community liaison, and facilitator. Woo, that is a phenomenal list of accolades. He is also the Vice President of Environmental Justice, Climate, and Community Revitalization for the National Wildlife Federation. He is also the founder of Revitalization Strategies, a business focused on moving our most vulnerable communities from surviving to thriving. Before joining NWF, Mustafa was Senior Vice President of the Hip Hop Caucus. Have y'all heard of the Hip Hop Caucus before? That's a pretty dope organization. <laughs> he, he was charged with leading strategic direction and operations for 24 years. Doesn't he look like he's just 24, so I don't know how he made that magic happen. But for 24 years, he worked at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which we know as EPA. He began working at EPA on social justice issues at the tender age of 16 and joined the EPA as a student, becoming a founding member of the Office of Environmental Justice. 
He was Senior Advisor for Environmental Justice and Community Revitalization and Assistant Associate Administrator, working to strengthen issues, policies, and programs. Mustafa serves on the boards of Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Union of Concerned Scientists, Rodney Bear Foundation, Tree, and Climate Cox Boat. Please join me in welcoming none other than Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali. Can we give my sister another round of applause? Well, it's good to see so many uh, amazing leaders who are in the room today. Um, give yourselves a round of applause. My mother says, go ahead, you can give yourself a round of applause. So you're going to hear me talk a little bit about my mother and my grandmother. But my mother says that if you're not willing to applaud yourself, then nobody else will. And that's why it's important, because lots of times when we have African-American brothers and sisters, Latinx brothers and sisters, Asian and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters, indigenous brothers and sisters, sometimes low wealth white brothers and sisters, we sometimes don't understand the value that we bring. James Baldwin said that if I love you, I have to make you conscious of the things that you don't see. Sometimes folks don't see the beauty that exists inside of our communities. Sometimes folks don't see the impacts that are happening inside of our communities. The 200,000 people who die prematurely from air pollution every year, your work matters because you're changing that dynamic. 24 million folks in our country who suffer from asthma and 7 million kids, and disproportionately is the African American and Latinx children who are the ones that go into the emergency rooms and the ones that are losing their lives prematurely. Your work matters. Sometimes, folks don't see the innovation that's happening inside of our communities, like Black Millennials for Flint, or WEAC for Environmental Justice, or UPROSE, or the revitalization project that's happening in South Carolina that's led by Harold Mitchell. Sometimes, each and every one of you who are doing incredible work don't need to be in front of the spotlight don't need to be in the newspaper because you do it because the work matters. Because you're trying to change the dynamics that happen inside of our communities. You are moving our communities from surviving to thriving. Y'all say that with me. From surviving, surviving. to thriving. To thrive. We're going to have to try that again because that would be pitiful. From surviving, from surviving. to thriving. To thriving. You see, that has to be our North Star and all the work that we do. We have to be focused on the upliftment of our communities, of that transformative change, of making sure that the $3.5 trillion and that $1.5 trillion, that there's real accountability and that it makes it into our communities. We're also blessed that we have an administration that has individuals inside of it who come from the work and who understand what's going on. But all of that doesn't matter if we are not honoring the young leaders we're carrying the time, not in the future, but are doing it right now. And we're going to make sure that we're doing that today. I'll leave you all as I close as we begin to move through our agenda for today. I was taught as a young boy that you have power unless you give it away. We have to utilize our power. We have to translate our power into making sure that real changes happen, that real sets of opportunities become a reality for the next set of folks who are following you. So y'all do me a favor. We all see if the folks who are in the room today are serious about making change happen. I want everybody to say power. Power. See, once again, I don't know where, I know they didn't teach you about power in high school or elementary school or a number of other places. So let's try it one more time. Everybody say power. Power. We're going to try it one last time. Put your right hand in the air. You should put your right guard on or your secret or whatever you need <laughs> you came out of the house tonight. Everybody say power. Power. With that being said, I am now going to transition. And we're going to bring up my brother, uh, Jameson Ford, uh, who is going to introduce uh, my friend and uh, the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, Michael Regan. So, Jameson, why don't you come on up? Clearly, I am not 
not a ninth grader, um, but very excited to read the words of one of our youth, E.J. Griots, who has a busy career being a dynamic high school student. Um, Jameson Ford is a student at McKinley Tech um, here in Washington, D.C. And I just want to mention that these are not my words, these are the words of this dynamic young lady. Um, so good evening. I am speaking on behalf of Jamison Ford, and she uses all pronouns. She's a youth organizer in D.C. It's truly an honor to be here, something that she loves about organizing, and that it's all about people and being surrounded by so many black and brown faces that are making a difference and are creating a better world for themselves and their communities. Nothing makes me happier. As we all know, vulnerable communities, especially communities of color, are hit first and far worse by climate change and have faced health burdens at a disproportionate rate than the rest of the population. Those same communities have aging infrastructure, polluted water supplies, and unreliable or unaffordable access to safe drinking water. Everyone deserves to live in a safe and healthy community with clean energy, and some do, while there are still far too many communities that don't. Luckily, there are so many people fighting to achieve this goal. With that being said, it is also an honor to introduce our speaker for today. Michael S. Regan was sworn in as the 16th Administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency on March 11, 2021, becoming the first black man, and I'm going to say that one more time, becoming the first black man and second country to lead the U.S. EPA. Administrator Regan is a native of Goldsboro, North Carolina, where he developed a passion for the environment while hunting and fishing with his father and grandmother and exploring the vast lands, waters, and intercoastal plains of North Carolina. As the son of two public servants, his mother a nurse for nearly 30 years, and his father a retired colonel with the North Carolina National Guard, Vietnam veteran, and former agricultural extension agent, Michael Regan went on to follow in his parents' footsteps and pursue a life of public service. Prior to his nomination as EPA Administrator, Michael Regan served as the Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. As Secretary, he spearheaded the development and implementation of North Carolina's Seminole Plan to address climate change and transition to state a clean energy economy. Under his leadership, he secured the largest coal ash cleanup in the United States history. Now, he already is the first black man. Why don't I say that one more time? He let, he secured the largest coal ash cleanup in the United States history. He led complex negotiations regarding the cleanup of the Cape Fear River, which had been contaminated for years by the toxic chemicals. Um, in addition, he established North Carolina's first of its kind Environmental Justice and Equity Advisory Board to better align social inequities, environmental protection, and community empowerment. Throughout his career, he's been guided by a belief in forming consensus, fostering an open dialogue rooted in respect for science, hello somebody, and the law, and an understanding that environmental protection and economic prosperity go hand in hand. Administrator Regan is a graduate of uh, <laughs> North Carolina Agriculture a t State University, making him the first EPA administrator to have graduated from a historically black college or university. Can I get out of my He also earned a master's degree in public administration from the George Washington University. Him and his wife, Melvina, are proud parents to their son, Matthew. In conclusion, everyone, please give a round of applause for the first black man to serve as the EPA Administrator, Michael S. Friedman. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent introduction. <laughs> I can use that every day. I'm feeling pretty good. I was just in the lobby uh, talking to CeeLo Green about environmental protection. And uh, now I'm on the stage with my brother, Mr. EJ himself, Mustafa Ali. So this is a good day for me. You know, I want to thank uh, our hosts for, that, for those kind words. And even though Jameson's not here, it's an honor to, to be here 
and being introduced by exciting young folks like, like Jameson. I'd like to thank the Black Millennials for Flint, uh, Climate Action Campaign, EDF, and the Congressional Black Caucus for, for making this evening possible. It's young people like Jameson and all of the outstanding honorees here tonight who keep me feeling inspired, uh, hopeful for the future, and admittedly, uh, a little nostalgic. I'm just a few years older than being 40 under 40, so <laughs> that stings just a little bit. But being here tonight actually has me thinking about my own journey. I am a proud North Carolinian born and raised, the son of, <laughs> the son of two lifelong public servants. And I grew up hunting and fishing with my father and grandfather. And they instilled a love of the outdoors in me enough for me to pursue a lifetime of protection of our air, our water, and our communities from environmental harm. Like my father, it was announced, I'll say it again, I attended North Carolina a and State University, where I graduated with a degree in Earth and Environmental Science. And I can honestly say that I would not be standing here tonight without my HBCU experience. So to my fellow HBCU alumni who are being recognized tonight, you are proof that it's not only the degrees from Harvard and Yale that can change the world. It's the degrees from Howard, from Spelman, from Tennessee State, and from a and that can and will change the world. You're all here tonight because of your hard work, your perseverance, and your courage. Courage to speak out against injustice to demand more from those of us who are in power, and to fight for something that you all know to be inherently true, that all people in this country, regardless of the money in their pocket, the color of their skin, or the communities that they live in, deserve clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, and the promise of a healthy life. Now, we all know that this work is not for the faint of heart. It, it can often feel like an uphill battle. There are times where you might wonder how much longer must you keep fighting before you see the change that you're fighting for. But I hope that you see, because you have to see, that thanks to you, so much has already changed. And so much is currently changing. You've sparked a national conversation, not only about climate change and environmental justice, but about the world the kind of world we fundamentally want to create and leave, not only to your generation, but the generations to come. Thanks to Leah Thomas and Isaias Hernandez and EPA's own Rosemary and Bakary. Thanks to the teachers and the students and the activists. Thanks to all of you, environmental justice is finally taking its rightful place in the work at EPA, but also in the entire federal government not as an add-on or an afterthought, but as a central driving force in every single thing that, you, that, that we do. And this is something that I'm not only espousing as the administrator of EPA. I think you've heard it time and time again. President Biden has made racial equity and environmental justice a central theme in this administration's work. That means that the lived experiences of our black, Latinx, indigenous, and low-income communities will be at the forefront of all of our decision making. And we will fight to ensure that every child in the United States of America can safely drink from the faucet, inhale a full breath of clean, fresh air, and play outdoors without the risk of environmental hazard and harm. If there were ever a moment in time when we could break the pattern of environmental justice that has long plagued this country, I believe that that moment is right now. Nearly 40 years after black residents in Warren County, North Carolina, protested a PCB landfill in their community, and seven years after the suffering of children in Flint, Michigan, shined a bright light on how people of color unjustly bear, unjustly bear the burdens of polluted water. So trust me when I say, we need you. We need your courage. We need your compassion. We need your sense of justice. And more importantly, we need your ambition. People's lives only get better when you're involved. So please, keep going, keep contributing, and I can promise you that I will be there to fight alongside you every single step of the way. Thank you all.
Administrator Regan another round of applause. All right. Well, we're now going to begin to transition. We have a, a video that we're going to show, and then we're going to begin the award ceremony. But I just want to remind everyone that the civil rights movement wouldn't have been the civil rights movement without young people. The women's suffrage movement wouldn't have been what it was without young people. And of course, the early environmental movement was also led, uh, in many instances, by young people. And the environmental justice movement has been an intergenerational led by both our elders and young people, making transformational change. So with that being said, we want to now bring forward the first video um, that will take us through the beginning part of our program. So. Hello, everyone. I'm Rosemary Anobakari, and I am so excited to accept the 40 Under 40 Award for Excellence in Leadership in Environmental Justice. This award is such an honor. And I just want to say that I'm looking forward to continuing to work alongside of you all to fight for communities to have access to clean air, clean water, and healthy lands to live on. Thank you again, and looking forward to seeing you all soon. As a first generation Mexican American born and raised in the frontline community, I'm humbled and floored to be recognized for my contribution that seeks to make the lives better for people and communities like my own across the United States. Thank you, Black Millennials for Flint, for uplifting the work of so many environmental champions that are working tirelessly behind the scenes. This goes for all of us. Our stories, our contributions do matter. Let's not be discouraged. Thank you. I firmly believe that everyone deserves to live in a place that is conducive for their health, that their environment and the quality of it shouldn't be the one thing that holds them back from pursuing their own goals, dreams, and ambitions. That's why I do the work that I do. I want to thank Black Millennials for Flint for recognizing my work with the 40 Under 40 Award. I also want to thank my family, my friends, my mentors like Dr. Sakobi Wilson, my mentors from Tuskegee University and University of Michigan, and also for thank my community for allowing me to do the work that I do here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jasmine Hall, a Flint-based public health leader and epidemiologist. I'm grateful to be a young, gifted, and green 40 Under 40 awardee. I would like to thank Black Millennials for Flint, the Congressional Black Caucus, the Environmental Defense Fund, the Black Women's Health Imperative, Climate Action Campaign, and Climate Power for recognizing and celebrating this work in Black and Brown communities. I look forward to continuing. Thank you. Buenas noches. I'm Andrea Delgado, and I want to thank Black Millennials for Flint for this wonderful recognition. For farm workers across the country, environmental justice is about working without being poisoned and ensuring that children are not deprived of their potential due to toxic pesticides. It's about the right to water, shade, and paid rest periods so that extreme heat and outdoor work don't combine to make you 30 times more likely to die than workers in other occupations. I am honored to be among you tonight and inspired by the leadership of my fellow awardees. It will take all of us and many more to achieve the progress we want to see in our communities. Si se puede. Hi, my name is Curtis Bennett, Director of Equity and Community Engagement at the National Aquarium in Baltimore, Maryland. And I want to take the time to say thank you to all the partners and sponsors who have recognized me as a 2021 recipient of the Young, Gifted, and Green 40 Under 40 Award. I am incredibly honored, humbled, and excited to be part of this incredible network um, as we continue to learn, grow, and support one another in this incredibly important work. Thank you. Hello, relatives. My name is Jade Begay. I am the Climate Justice Campaign Director at NDN Collective. Um, I just want to express a deep um, gratitude and just that I am honored to receive this award from Black Millennials for Flint. I want to share a big water is life, mini wachoni, agua es vida. May we continue to lift each other up and work in 
in solidarity and um, and heal divisions um, and really come together to protect what is sacred, to protect our homes um, and each other. Thank you. I would like to thank the organizers for recognizing me as a young Gifton and Green 40 Under 40 honoree. I was first introduced to the environmental sustainability field as an undergraduate student at South Carolina State University. Since then, I have continued my career in environmental injustice, working at local community-based organizations and nonprofits. I would like to thank you all for this again invaluable opportunity to network with the cohort, as well as esteemed guests at the gala on today. Keep hope alive. It's a great day in Washington, DC. Get into this Afrofuturism head wrap. Thank you, Black Millennials for Flint. Y'all are amazing. It is a true honor to be honored by a group that believes in a consistent, positive vision for our futures. I'm so excited to continue growing with y'all and to continue building the future that we can believe in. Thank you to my family, to my movement family, to my youngins, everybody who does it for the cause. Continue to keep striving, continue to check the weather. Peace. I wanna say thank you uh, for being awarded this recognition and honor for the Young, Gifted and Green 40 Under 40. Thank you for Black Millennials for Flint and all of the supporting organizations and individuals uh, that put this together. It really, uh, I am full with gratitude for this type of recognition. As we all know, we don't do the work for the recognition, but we do hope that our work has the impact for what we seek to be in service of. And I am extremely honored and humbled in being recognized in this way. Muchas, muchas gracias y adelante. Siempre pa adelante. I am truly grateful and humbled to be recognized amongst other environmental justice leaders in the movement. None of this would be possible without the love and support of my partner, Jasmine, my mom, my dad, my two brothers, uh, and the rest of my community. I would also like to thank my GHHI family, in particular, Ruthann, Kate, and Kelsey, for all of their support over the years. And I would also like to recognize that none of this would be possible without all of the, the environmental justice pioneers that paved the way. Uh, and I hope to be one of those leaders that inspires the next generation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tabari Smith. And at first I would like to say thank you to the sponsors, donors, and the organization that were involved in the selection process. It is an honor and a privilege to be selected as a 40 under 40 awardee this year. I would also like to thank my mom, Vandella Smith, my family, friends, and colleagues across the nation that continue to push me to make a difference in the environmental injustice space. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you so much. I'm honored really to be even nominated for this award. Uh, honored to be selected. I wanna give a big thank you to Black Millennials for Flint uh, for this award and all of the other uh, folks who sponsor this, uh, this awards program. Uh, I really want to thank my village, uh, all of my people who really keep me grounded and uh, have, have held me down and have supported me. Um, and that includes my WEACT colleagues. I know they work so hard and, and a lot of what I've done has been done uh, in collaboration with them. I really want to thank my friends and family. Uh, you know who you are, uh, but especially my parents and my brother uh, who really, you know, for me informed what it means to be a part of a black community, what it means to take care of each other from uh, the beginning. And I also wanna thank my partner, Dara, who's been here for everything. I literally could not do uh, anything without her. Um, and I, you know, would be remiss in really thinking about all the shoulders that I stand on. And I'm just so proud to, uh, represent uh, the people who got me here and there's more than enough work left to do and um, I really appreciate it and thank you again. Hello everyone, my name is Mia Montoya Hammersley. I'm here in Ute, Tewa and Hickory Apache lands. I just want to thank Black Millennials for Flint for recognizing my work, um, recognizing me for this award, and I want to say congratulations to all my fellow awardees. All of the work that you all are doing gives me so much inspiration and hope for the future, so Hawa and Chokuyo Tessia, thank you so much for this award. 
Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I humbly accept the Gifted in Green 40 Under 40 Awards recognized by Black Millennials for Flint. Thank you so much for recognizing the important environmental justice work that I do. And thank you so much for being a national leader in the environmental justice work space. I'm so excited to keep working with Black Millennials for Flint in the future and keep fighting for this important change. Thank you. I wanna thank my mom and dad, Kim and Alvin Watts for always affirming who I am a Black and Indigenous woman who asks a lot of questions. Thanks for supporting me to follow my heart to environmental justice, for it is how I have come to navigate the world. And I'm so grateful to have found my role in the EJ movement. Thanks to Fresh Energy for nominating me and acknowledging my leadership within and outside of our organization. I'm so honored to be part of this group of young, gifted, and green. Hello, my name is Osip Ahmed, and I'm thrilled to be honored as a Young, Gifted, and Green 40 Under 40 awardee. The health and wellness of Black communities across the country are under threat as the planet continues to warm and we are faced with increasing heat waves, floods, air pollution, and other environmental conditions that are hazardous to human health. Through my work as a policy analyst and reproductive justice advocate, I've been focused on raising awareness about the intersection between reproductive justice and the effects of climate change and working to ensure that women, in particular Black women, can live healthy and full lives where their bodily autonomy is respected and protected. There is much work to be done in the coming years, but those involved in this body of work are beginning to make headway, and I'm committed to continuing to advance those efforts. Thank you again. Hi, I am truly honored and humbled to receive the Young, Gifted, and Green Under 40 Award. I would particularly like to thank my family, including my husband, my parents, my mother-in-law, and my two daughters who inspire me to do everything to serve others. I'd also like to thank the mentors and teachers I've had over the years who've taught me so much uh, in order to improve environmental health and environmental justice. And in particular, I would like to thank all the public health service officers of the Commission Corps and other public health practitioners, particularly those in environment, who through their daily work strive to improve environmental health and environmental justice for others, whether it's in the front lines or behind the scenes. Thank you. I am Yadira Sanchez, and I'm honored to accept this incredible award. I'd like to thank Black Millennials for Flint and their amazing partners for recognizing the significance of climate work in BIPOC communities. Poder Latinx Eco Poder campaign focuses on identifying solutions for Latinx communities facing environmental injustice to create tangible change through coordinated educational and political efforts. One of our goals is to diversify the environmental movement and lead with the voice and leadership of those communities directly impacted. Lastly, I would like to give a special thanks to our team for all their hard work and dedication. Gracias y juntos podemos proteger a nuestra madre tierra. Peace and blessings, everyone. My name is Darius Stanton II, and I want to thank Black Millennials for Flint for this award. I want to thank those that nominated me. I want to thank Reggie Parrish and Jim Edward for giving me my first role at the EPA and advancing environmental issues in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. I also wanna thank my dad for the work that he's done in advancing the lives of those within our communities. And I wanna thank our ancestors who built this country and really you know, fought for us to live in an equitable space here. So thanks again. Hi, my name is Ms. Brad Dauda, and I'm incredibly grateful to have been selected for the Young, Gifted and Green Award. It means a lot to me and it strengthens my pursuit of energy justice for all, as I truly believe that the health of the planet and the health of our community should be prioritized and should always be being centered in equity. I look forward to continuing this work with my fellow awardees. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Isaiah Hernandez. I am an environmental educator and the creator of Queer Brown Vegan, and I'm super excited to have been awarded and to even be nominated to Black Millennials for Flint Young Gifted 40 Under 40. My work as an environmental educator started at a very young age, asking questions, living up in Los Angeles, California, from living in affordable housing, recycling cans growing up, and living nearby toxic facilities that really grew an interest for my curiosity to learn more about injustice and why this is prevalent. 
Mi nombre es Daphne Rose Sanchez. Soy la directora ejecutiva de Kinetic Communities Consulting, la primer MWBE B Corporation enfocada en energía eficiente para nuestra gente en Nueva York. Es un honor estar aquí con líderes de nuestra comunidad. Gracias a Ford por el reconocimiento. Tengo el privilegio hoy de hablar con todos ustedes como una sobreviviente de Huracán Sandy. Por mi comunidad, mis padres que han ayudado a tantos inmigrantes, mis compañeros en KC3 que se aseguran que nuestras comunidades tengan energía renovables y nuestros líderes en la comunidad como NHS of Queens, Latinos en Sostenibilidad y Woxes que abren la puerta para la próxima generación. Gracias otra vez por este honor. Soy Daphne Rose Sanchez y yo soy una mujer legendaria de Ford. Thank you, Black Millennials of Flint, for recognizing me as one of your Young, Gifted, and Green 40 Under 40 awardees. It has been a pleasure to work and learn and serve with this great organization and the impact that it's had on my work in career and technical education and my daughter, who is now an environmental justice guru, um, has truly been uh, remarkable and a pleasure of ours. So thank you again for this opportunity, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Commissioner Tammy Sawyer here. Thank you so much for this honor today. I hate that I can't be with each of you. I know that you are keeping your carbon footprint low, but having a great time. Thank you for being a partner in my community and across the country. Um, I'm just really honored to work alongside each of you doing this work in Memphis. Thank you so much. Let's continue to be the change that we want to see. Thank you, Young, Gifted, and Green, for honoring the hardest working mayor's office in America. This year, our office partnered with the community to stop the extension of an oil-based pipeline into a predominantly black neighborhood in Memphis. Now, our very own special assistant, Alex Hensley, is advocating to create a permanent local law so that pipelines cannot be built where families live or children attend school. This team is leading the way, and I thank Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris for making environmental justice a top priority in our office. Thank you for highlighting our efforts at this year's 40 Under 40 Awards Gala. It is an honor to receive this award. I'd like to start by thanking my family, my friends, my colleagues, and everyone who supports my work and passion for our environment and our community. Thank you, Corazón Latino, for motivating me and so many others to reconnect with Madre Tierra. And most importantly, I'd like to thank my students for being my reason why and inspiring me every single day. I hope to continue making you proud. Thank you. 